hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Simi Kemza James so for our new and old subscribers you're all welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to cut and sew a senator kaftan for a man so I have this wedding coming up and he's a very close friend of mine so we wanted to look really good for the wedding so it's the color of the wedding is actually blue so I'm going to be making a blue senator kaftan for my husband and i'm going to be making an ankara dress for myself so this video is more or less going to be like a vlog although i'm going to be dividing them into different separate videos right because if i'm to put all this video to get videos together it's going to be extremely long so i'll be dividing it up to like two or three videos right so i'll be showing you how i cut and sew so we'll see where we'll stop with this very one and then you will continue and if you're not yet subscribed to my channel i don't know what you're waiting for do hit the subscribe button so and also turn on the post notification so that you see the next video when i i when i post that right so without further rambling this is the material we're going to be using this is from my store Timikens at James on Instagram is my name. So this fabric is a really luxurious um, senator material. This is not cashmere, guys. It's so nice and it has this lush and a very, very subtle glow and shine to it. I don't know if you can see that properly and it has stripes. It's, it's a luxurious material, guys. So if you want it, you can order it's affordable but not too affordable because like i said it's a luxurious fabric so you can follow me up on instagram and buy or purchase yours i deliver worldwide so guys without further ado let's just get into cutting so the fabric came already folded like so so i'll be turning it to the wrong side because i don't want to put chalk lines on the right side so i'll fold it in half and it has stripes so i'm going to be putting the stripes towards um i'm going to put the stripes to sit vertically instead of horizontal because horizontal stripes are not beautiful at all so plus i want to get an illusion of him looking taller so that's why i would have to fold it like that So I have two and a half trouser length of fabric all together. That's almost three yards, but it's not up to three yards. So the length of the pants is what I'm going to measure plus three inches or 2.5 inches hemming allowance. That's what I'm going to be marking. So I'm just going to, the length of the pants is 38, then plus 2.5 inches hemming allowance. I have 40.5. Now, when I want to mark that 40.5 over here, I'm going to take out 1.5 inches from the waistline. So the waistline is going to be around here. So I'll take out, um, I'll take out on this side, which is the waist side, I'm going to take out 1.5 from the total measurement and that would make for the waistband all in all. So that's what i'm just going to mark and on this side as well So this is now my new waistline. Now on the waistline, I'm going to mark the waist, the distance from the waist to the hip. So I'll still put my tape on that 1.5 inches that I have here on my line here. So don't forget, we took out that 1.5 inch for waistband. So I'm going to mark the distance from the waist to the hip. 
then i'll mark from the distance i'll mark the distance from the waist from the waist to the crouch line so i'll go ahead and mark the crouch line like so and i'll do the same thing on this side so the crouch line for this person is 10 inches measure your own crouch is never the same for everybody is not the same let me not say never but it's not going to be the same so i'm going to i'm marking the the hip line as well here like so then i'm going to mark the distance from the waist to the knee i have 20 inches so i'll mark 20 inches then i'll measure the exact length of the pants which is 38 inches i'll move further and mark 38 inches square everything out so now on the crouch line so here is the waist line here is the hip line the crouch the knee and the length of the pants then this side is the hemming allowance for the length now on the crouch line i'm going to mark half of the lap measurement so i'll mark half of it here like so so i have 13.5 so i'm going to mark 14 i'm leaving half inch here for sewing it's not necessarily sewing allowance just to overlock that side so i'll mark the crouch length which is half of the lap, one lap measurement now on the hip side i'll mark half of the hip measurement a quarter a quarter of the hip measurement sorry so what i have here i'll still mark it here that's that quarter of the hip measurements that we have is what I'm still going to mark here. Then I'll connect that into a straight line like so. So down to the crouch line. Now I'm going to make a curve using my French curve to just sort of, I'm going to make a curve here. So which will be this will be our front um, crouch measurement. So on this waistline now, I'm going to measure a quarter of the waist measurement. So the waist that I'm working with is 34 inches. So a quarter of 34 will be around 8.5. So I'll mark 8.5 here. So if you want to add a dart or a pleat on the front, you will add half of an inch for that reason. Then I'm going to add half of an inch sewing allowance. Then I'm going to connect using my, my hip curve. I'll just go ahead and connect like so to the hip, to the hip line. Now, on this side, which is the knee measurement, on the crouch measurement, I'll find the ha half of this crouch measurement. I have 14, so half of it will be 7. So I'll measure 7, like so, and mark here. Then, on the hem as well, I'll measure 7 and mark. Then I'll connect that into a straight line. Like so. So by the time I do that on the knee side on the knee side I'm going to divide the knee by 2 so the knee that I'm working with is 17 inches so I'll divide 17 by 2 and I'll have 8.5 now I'm going to divide that 8.5 by 2 again so whatever I have I have 4.2 so from this midpoint, I'm going to mark 4.2 on this side. Then I'll mark another 4.2 facing this side. So I'll get, 
I'll get my hip curve as well or a pant curve. This is this is actually a pant curve or a hip curve, whatever you prefer to call it. So I'll just connect it like so. So I'll connect it to that point. Then I'll connect from this couch line to, to this knee point as well. So you can see that our pants is beginning to come out nicely. So for the hem, you decide how you want it to be. So I want it to pencil out nicely. So I'm using 14 inches for the hem there. So I will divide 14 by two, which will give me seven. Then I'll find half of seven, which is 3.5. And I'll mark 3.5 here and another 3.5 on this other side. Then I'll connect like so i'll connect to the hem like so and i'll connect like so as well now back to the waist you can see the shape of our pants is is actually nice like so so what we are going to do now from the waistline here i'm going to come down by one inch so that it's snug on the waist so i'll come down by one inch and i'll connect it to to the side seam here so i'm bringing it down on the front side so this is what it looks like now so what i'm going to do now is to add half so this is our new waistline this slanted line here so i'm going to be adding half of an inch from here further just to this this point so i'll be adding half of an inch here which i'm going to be using to join that front side together so i'll just mark that so the next thing i'm going to do is to mark half of an inch upwards that's the point where i'm going to be using to i'll use that line to as my sewing allowance to join my waistband so i have half of an inch here now before I, I will now cut out i'm going to cut on that half of an inch here when i get to the hem i'll stop as well then i'm going to flip this side this hemming allowance over like so So you can go ahead and press it nicely before you continue cutting. So. so this is what we have, like so. So by the time we hem it, we'll have a 38. When we hem it inwards, so you can see so now i'm going to move these like this then i'll lay this front just to cut the back side as straight as possible lay it nicely what you want to do is to get at least 2.5 inches on the crowd from here this side like so you want to get at least 2.5 inches and on the waist side from this side of the waist this new point here you want to be able to get at least three inches going upwards on that side so that is what you want to do so i'll just align my stripes you make sure now this is just for aesthetics so I'll just ensure that my stripes are, are aligned, right? So we have all our stripes are aligned. Now on the crouch, this crouch line, I'm going to extend the crouch by 2.5 inches. So I'll just extend the crouch line like so. Then I'll extend by 2.5 inches. So I have 2.5 like so. 
now every other place i'm going to be marking two inches extension all around the pant so i'll mark two inches every other place now on the hem line you want to extend the hem as well then i'm going to connect those two two, two inches together Now, by the time I draw this line, I'm going to, from this back crouch now, I'll come down by 0 0.6 inches downwards on this line, like so. Then, on the waistline, I'm going to come up. You remember we went down by 1 inch on this, on the front side, so I'll replace that 1 inch on the back side and go up another 1.5 inch for the butt rise, like so. Then I'm going to be measuring what I have on the waist. So whatever I have, I have 10.2. So I'll mark that 10.2 up to the boiled rise right in a slanted manner from the side seam of the waist. So I'm just going to go ahead and rule that to the boiled rise. Right. Like so. So the back has a slant. The slant on the front is going down and that on the back is going upwards. So, from this 0 0.6 inch that I went down, I'm just going to nicely curve to the, this side. So, you want to create a curve on that back side. So, this will be it for the back. Every other thing is going to be exactly the same thing. So, on this side, I'll cut the exact same thing. So here is the pants, the body of the pants. So we are going to be cutting some of the things we'll be needing on the pants. So this curve that you have here, like so, you're going to remove it with that same curve because you're going to use it as, as a facing for the pocket. So this curve we have, so you just you just want to get the cuff to be nice and clean like so you need two of it so this is it so we are going to use it for the facing of the pocket and the next thing we need is going to be our waistband so because i don't have enough of this fabric to waste i'm not going to be cutting the waistband yet so I'm going to keep this aside. I'm not done with the pants. I'll come to iron the pocket side and everything. But, and the waistband, cut out the waistband as well and cut out the pocket. But before then, let's work on, let's cut out our shirt so that we know that what we are left with is what we are going to use for all of that. So the length of the captain is 38 and I will need 3 inches for the hemming. So 38 plus 3 is 41. I'm just going to put 42 in case I might trim it off later. So I'll mark the 42 here. So, and I just folded it. The person's chest is, his chest is 42. So I'm going to divide 42 by, by four. I have 10.5. So I would, you just need like around two inches again which will be around 10 12.5 so i have enough that's just what i folded in half like so and you make sure you give it a very clean iron so i press down this side and i'm going to draw a line here then i'll cut it out first then i'll cut out the back as well i'll keep this aside then i'll fold again and press then we'll come back and continue so i'm going to come i've gone ahead to fold and iron nicely as well so i'll bring that front side back again and i'll lay it 
I'll lay it nicely, ensuring that this side aligns. You want to get this sharp tip. That's why you need to iron to be exactly the same. Like so. So by the time you do that, you're going to measure like 3.5 inches from this side where the front side stops. The back side will be longer by 3.5 inches. Depending on how much you want to slant, you can work with 3 inches or even 4, depending on how much slant you want on that side, on the front shoulder. So I'm working with 3.5 inches so i'm just going to cut out so what i'll do now is to move the front side to align with this one or you turn it over whichever works for you so i'll move I just move the front side to align with the upper side then i'll leave the difference on the hem i'll still move it back don't worry So now here we go so now i'm going to mark my neckline and my shoulder slant so first off i'm going to mark my shoulder slant so i want it slanted by three inches so i'll mark from this hem i'll mark three inches like so on the hem of the fabric i'll mark three inches then i'll connect that three inches to this point up here like so so i'll check the shoulder i want the shoulder i'm working with is 18 inches half of 18 is 9 inch so i'll just put a mark there and measure what i have there is around two point something so i want it to be three on that shoulder line so i'll just mark three inches from that shoulder point so i'll just connect like so just so i get that three inches properly so when i do that three inches i'm going to go ahead and cut from here i'm cutting only the upper side guys i'm not cutting together with the the back shoulder i'm just cutting the upper side you can see so i just cut that out so i have the back intact so now i'm going to move this back to that point like so so now the hem is aligned the difference is back to the front right so on this shoulder slant now that difference of three inches that we have is what i'll mark here so i'm supposed to cut that shoulder together guys but i'm just scared that was why it was out of fear i wanted to be sure before i cut anything so So 
can cut so you can actually cut that together when i was cutting this one side at that point you can just cut it together so when i move this uh, this is what i have so i'm going to heat up my pressing iron get it to be hot make sure this point is nice and aligned then you fold this now you're going to fold this back side over the front side and what you want to do is to get it to overlap by half of an inch so i'm going to get it to overlap by around half of an inch like so now you're going to get it extended to the front like so so don't worry about that when your iron is hot enough you just press it down you want it to create a very crease and a nice line around there Once you do this, you keep your iron aside so you have it overlapped like this by half of an inch inwards, right? So now I'm going to mark the neckline. So the neck that I'm working with is 17 inches. So anything from 16, 17, what I do is from this point here, this sharp point here that I have here, I'm going to measure four inches downwards. So there's a formula for calculating that. I'll put that up on the screen. And for the length, I'm going to mark around 2.7 from. I'll just fill this, this line that goes up here. I'll mark 2.7 like so. And I'll just sort of curve it with my hands. So I'm going to be piping the neck. So because of that, I'm at liberty to always... So I'll get the liberty to change uh, my neckline. That's to open it wider if I want. So on this point, I'll just put my scissors inside of this line here. So I'm just cutting from the back side like so up to this point. Then I'll stop. Now I'll put my scissors inside in between the two as well. And I'll cut the front, just the front. Then on this side, I'll grab the back as well. Then I'll stop. So this is what I have. So this pointed line, so this pointed mark here, I'll go down by 0 0.7 and I'll cut it straight to this point like so. So this is what you have as the neck. So once I am done, when I'm done sewing the dress, I can always, before I pipe that neck, I can always measure to be sure that I have the 17 inches. So you always want it to be smaller. It should not be bigger than what your actual neck is. So this is what I have. So next I'm going to measure the shoulder. So I have, I'm working with 19 inches, 18 inches. So I need nine inch. So I'll mark the nine inch here, like so starting from the neckline down here then i'll add half of an inch for sewing allowance that's to join to add the sleeve on it so from that point i'm going to mark my armhole which i'm working with 9.5 so i'll mark 9.5 here then i'll just draw a line across that 9.5 like so i don't want a lot of pencil marks on my dress so from that shoulder line i'll mark half of the bust measurement that i'm working with which is 10 inches then i'll mark one inch for joining allowance so on men clothes one thing you don't want to do is to give a lot of um allowance for a lot of allowance inside of it because it affects the the fitting it makes the the dress ill-fitted so first off I'll draw this 9 inch straight like so just on the 9 inch I'll connect it straight then I'll just go ahead and make a curve like so 
then I'll connect it to that half inch that I have left here. Once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and cut out the shoulder. Now I'm cutting both ways. So now I'll mark from here till then I'll find half of it. Then on that half point, I'm going inwards by half inch or 0 0.6. Now I'll connect this 0 0.6 by freehand to meet this point like so. Then I'll also connect it from here inwards. Now on this side, I'm going to cut only the front side. I'm not cutting the back side of the armhole i'm just going to cut only the front side reasons being that it will eradicate folds on on the shirt that usually happen around the armhole so the front armhole is usually deeper than the back armhole so this is the front armhole and that is the back armhole so now i'll move this and measure so I'll measure from here, from our shoulder till the the affluence point, which is around the tummy. I have 18 inches here. So I'll just go ahead and square out that 18 inch point. Then I'll mark I'll mark what I have here. Right? Then I'll take out half of an inch from it. So on this side, I have 11.75, then I'll mark 11.25 here, taking out half of an inch just to give it a little bit of shape on the waist side. So I'll connect it to this point. Then I'm going to mark from the, from the shoulder to the hip. which I have 26. I'm going to mark the hip. You can use the hip measurement on that point. You divide it by four. But for this person, the person is not that big. So I'm going to use what I have on the chest, on the hip line as well. Then I'll connect it to to the affluence point oh sorry guys to the affluence point then i'll just go ahead and mark out the hemming allowance that i have so remember i left three inches so i'll just fold that three inches like so iron it nicely as my iron is getting hot i'll determine the length of my slit so i want my slit to be 10 inches so i'll mark 10 inch like so so i'll extend this line straight to that 10 inch point before i leave that side for the overlap so i'm leaving this side for the overlap so now i'm going to cut this out have this one for the side overlap or the slit over overlap now I'll just go ahead and give it a little bit of iron just so when I'm done I'll know what I'm doing so this is it about the dress so I'm going to cut out facing for both the front and the back but before I do that, I'm going to cut out the sleeve first so that I know how much fabric I need. So just in case I need to use another fabric for that side, that will be fine. 
so for the sleeve i'm going to be folding this fabric into four and i'll mark the length of the sleeve i want a three quarter sleeve so i'm going to mark around 15 inches so i'll just roll that line across then i'll mark 4.5 inches downwards and i'll con i'll mark one inch away from the 4.5 and connect it to that point to make my um ca the cap of my sleeve and as you can see i have a proper sleeve video i'm going to be linking that up here so i'm not going to be giving an allowance for hemming the sleeve because i'm going to be turning it over with a fabric to give me a design there so for the front sleeve i'm going to make it deeper than the back so i just cut out that point for the front like you can see and i have this belt which i'm going to be using for the trouser side so that's going to be the waistband of the trouser so now i'm going to be cutting out um, this piece that you're seeing on bias i also have a tutorial on cutting a bias which i'll be linking up for you as well it's just simply cut on a horizontal sorry it's simply cut on a slanted move like like you can see so for the back side i just cut a facing for the back and i'm adding hair stay to sort of turn the facing side so i'll do the same for the front and cut out the facing for the sleeve as well as you can see that i'm cutting so that will serve as a design as well now i'm prepping my pocket and i'm going to be adding a little bit of paper stay to give it structure on the pocket side so i mark the pocket two inches by eight inches so i'm just folding to press over the pocket so i added that um that paper stay on the wrong side of the pocket so you can see so we are going to stop here for now till the part two is up and we'll continue in the next video so here's a quick one of some samples of ankara that i have for sale you can contact me via my instagram page and also subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed like my videos if you find them helpful and see you in my next tutorial guys bye